Hey, hello everyone. So finding yourself into a comfortable seat of your choice, you can sit on your shins, you can have your legs straight out in front of you, or a cross leg position. Sitting on a cushion if that feels more comfortable for you. If you'd like to take a mudra, you can bring middle finger and thumb together. Sitting up nice and tall and gently closing your eyes. Let's start the class by centering ourselves, drawing a connection to mind, body and breath. Each time an interrupting thought tries to make its way in, just simply let it go. Allowing your mind to rather focus on the sensation of calm, of quiet, and expansion. Take a few rounds of box breath to begin. So start by exhaling all of your air out and slowly inhaling two, three, four. Hold two, three, four. Exhale two, three, Four, hold, two, three, four, inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. Inhale, hold, exhale, and hold. Inhaling two, three, four, five. Hold, two, three, Four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, hold, two, three, four, five, inhale, hold. Exhale and hold. Last round, inhale and hold. Exhale. And hold. Start to return to your normal breath now. Matching inhale and exhale in terms of length and energy. And then slowly lowering your chin to your chest. Blinking eyes open. And inhaling to lift. On your inhale breath, float the hands overhead. Interlocking fingers and turn the palms to face up. Take a lovely deep stretch here, lifting tall through the body. 
On your inhale, bring the elbows out into a cactus. Draw the tips of the shoulder blades into the spine. Start to lift the chin slightly, opening through the chest. Inhale the hands behind you, interlocking fingers. And then roll the shoulder blades together by straightening into the elbows. Moving the palms towards one another if there's space to do so. As you exhale, start to drop your chin to your chest and lift the hands a little bit higher, but also pushing them towards the floor at the same time. So the shoulders are moving away from the neck. Inhale, hands back up to the sky. And exhale to twist. Engaging into lower belly. Use your exhale to twist a bit further. Inhale, hands up, lifting tall through the torso, the side body, the spine, and exhale, twist to the other side. Use your exhale to go a little bit deeper. Inhale, coming back up to the center, and then releasing the hands down, you're going to open the feet as though you are coming into a Baddha Konasana, but keep the feet separated. Start to slide your hands underneath your shins, bringing the hands to the top of the feet. Lower the head down, and allow your body to slowly melt to the floor. So this is preparation phase of our tortoise pose. Feeling how the spine lengthens, how the hips and inner thighs start to open. And then inhale to roll yourself back up to sit. Bring the soles of the feet together now, interlocking fingers around the big toes and gently pushing the knees down towards the earth. Lift up into lower belly. And then just gently hinging forward. You don't have to go too deep into this. The body is still tight, not quite warmed up yet. Use this as a warming up posture as opposed to an intense asana. And then lifting back to center. Draw the knees together and swing the knees to one side, coming over onto hands and knees. Let's open up into our aligned tabletop pose and then flow through cat-cow. Deeply connecting to your ujjayi breath in cat cow pose. Feeling into each area of the torso, spreading the energy from head to tail. And then inhaling back into neutral spine. Let's float up right arm and left leg. Lifting into lower belly. Kick your hand and fingers in opposite directions to reach the torso a bit longer. Inhale to grab hold of the foot behind you. And then lifting the chest up. Kick your foot up and back to help open the front body. Let's inhale to extend and then exhale just the hand to the mat, keeping the leg up. Exhale, draw the knee to the upper left arm and then inhale back. Exhale, upper left arm again and inhaling back flow with your breath so you bring the knee in drawing the air out making space 
to curl the knee a bit closer to that upper arm. One more time, draw that knee into the upper arm, squeeze into those obliques, flex that raised foot. And then inhale, extend, and gently release. Let's take up left arm, right leg. Reaching not only through fingers and heel, but through the crown of the head and the base of the tailbone. Sweeping your hand behind you, holding onto the foot, and lift open the chest here, coming into a lovely arch. Let's inhale, extend, and exhale, just the hands to the mat, lifting belly on the inhale, and then exhale, knee to upper right arm. And inhale, back flow with your breath. One more time and you'll draw the knee in and hold. Squeeze your obliques. Flex the foot, lift the knee a bit higher, and then inhale the leg back, and exhale back down to the mat. Open the knees, toes tucking next to one another, and reaching your hands forward as you lower the forehead to the mat. It's creepy crawly the fingers towards the front of the mat, we're very active in this position. Sliding the sitting bones back down towards the heels. Stretching the spine in multi-directions. Threading the needle now by sliding the right arm under the chest and looking at the right fingertips. Press all five fingernails of the right hand into the floor. We're still up on the tips of the fingers of the left hand. Let's inhale back to center and over to the other side. Open the shoulder to the sky, encouraging the twist. Inhale, coming to the center again, sink the forehead down and reach the hands forward as you slide your hips back. On your inhale, breath engage into the core to lift yourself back onto hands and knees, tucking toes, and sliding the hips up and back into downward facing dog, keeping the knees bent. Lift the hips up nice and high. Let's sink one heel to the floor and then the other. Get a nice deep stretch into the whole length of the back body. Relax your neck, open space in the shoulders, lifting into lower belly focusing on your ujjayi breath. Sinking both heels to the floor now. If they don't touch, it's absolutely fine, just reaching them towards the mat. Let's step the feet a little bit wider with the toes slightly out, the heels slightly in. And then you're going to walk your hands back towards the feet as you bend yourself down into malasana. You can keep the hands on the mat for now and allow the spine to relax a little bit. Drop chin to the chest. Slowly start to open the body, bringing the hands together and lifting up through the torso. 
spread the knees wide, anchoring baby toe down as much as the big toe. Let's release the hands to the floor. Walk yourself forward again, back into your downward facing dog, adjusting the foot alignment as you go so that your feet are hip distance parallel. On the inhale breath, take your right leg up to the sky and let's roll the ankle a few times. Change the direction of the roll other way round. Hug your knee in towards your face, rounding your back before lightly placing the foot on the floor in lunge pose. Sink the hips down as you lift open through the heart. Very light on the fingers. And then drop the back knee all the way down. Still keep the fingers on the floor, but you can lift up a bit higher now opening up the chest a bit deeper. Let the hips sink forward, gently stretching into your hip flexors. Slowly walk your hands up onto the front knee now and gently pushing the knee away as you open your heart. Be mindful what's happening in the lower back here, no compression. Feel as though the body is pulling together and lifting up. And then exhale, bring the hands back to the mat. Let's lift your back knee off the floor. Front leg up and back. Three-legged dog. Open the hip to face the side of your mat. Looking underneath your right arm. Bend into that top leg drawing the heel towards the glute. Open the hip a bit more. Make sure your standing leg is still in down dog alignment. Let's square off by lengthening and then releasing the foot to the mat. Taking your left leg up to the sky and rolling the ankle a few times in one direction and then changing in the other direction. Hug your knee to your face, face to your knee, and then step the foot down into lunge. Stay on the fingertips as you sink your hips and lift your chest. Bringing the back knee down now and lifting up onto the fingers. You can always make the stance a bit wider if you need a bit more space. Engage into the core muscles to take the weight of the torso. And then slide your hands up onto the front knee, lifting tall. And letting the hips sink down a bit further. Remember, you can always fold the side of your mat up if your knee is feeling tender. Lift your torso as you lean yourself away from the front leg. And then releasing the hands back down. Lift the back knee off the floor and float your front leg to the sky. Let's open the hip, looking underneath the left arm. Remember to keep your standing leg in its neutral down dog. Open the hip even more. And then bend into that top leg, bringing the heel to the glute. Slide the chest back towards the thighs. Let's square and straighten the leg. Square the hips and release back to the mat. Looking between the hands, take little steps coming forward. Keeping the legs as straight as you can manage to the front and lifting the hands to the shins in flat back. Stick your tailbone out as you reach your head forward. Exhale to forward fold all the way down to the mat, lengthening into the spine. Tip the weight a little bit forward onto the balls of the feet. The heels are not lifting, but they're very, very light. Floating your chest up again, halfway lift. 
Hands can be on the mat or on the shins. And exhale to forward fold. Lengthen into the torso. Bend your knees here and roll yourself up. Pressing heavily into the heels and engaging the strong thigh muscles to unravel the spine little bit by little bit. Coming all the way to stand in your Tadasana. Reconnect to Ujjayi breath. Reconnect to Bandhas. Let's inhale the hands overhead. Reaching from heel to fingers. Inhale the hands down at the heart center, bringing right hand forward, left arm back. Square your hips to the front of the mat and open the chest in the other direction. Inhale, hands together at the heart and then moving the other way. Inhale to the center. Press the hands firmly together and now round your back and bend your knees as you reach your hands forward, tucking chin to chest. Scoop your tailbone down, really rounding into that back. And then inhale, reach the hands out behind you, straightening the legs. So you get the tailbone out, lifting the heart. Inhale the hands back up to the sky and exhale to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, flat back onto fingertips or hands to the shins. And then exhale to step the right leg back into lunge. Sink the hips, lift the chest high. Inhale, left hand up. Turn your ribs and your thigh to meet one another. And exhale the hand back to the mat. Let's step it into plank. Feeling light in the hands, active in the core. Lowering knees, chest and chin to the mat. Keep the hips off the floor. Wrap the elbows to the rib cage. Sliding down onto the tummy and bringing the elbows to the mat for Sphinx Pose. Point your toes behind you and gently draw the elbows into the ribs. Exhale to release, hands under shoulders and sliding back into Child's Pose. One round of breath here. And downward facing dog. Breathing deeply into your down dog. Lift the knees, squeeze the thighs, anchoring the heels towards the mat. On your inhale, take the right leg to the sky. Hug the knee to the face and then step the foot in between your hands. Shorten the stance slightly for warrior one. Back heel on the mat. Square the hips, open up through the chest. Drop the shoulders slightly down and make space for the lower back. Let's inhale the hands behind you, interlocking fingers. Roll the shoulder blades together. Lift the chest slightly on your inhale. And then forward folding next to the inner thigh humble warrior. Turn the back hip in, the front hip slightly back. Let your head, neck and shoulders relax. Make sure you're not resting on that front thigh. Drop down to the inside of the leg. On your inhale breath, release the hands, lift your chest. Straighten your front knee and step the back foot in even more turning the toes to face the front of the mat. Square the hips off and then exhale to forward fold. Squeezing your inner thighs as you allow the crown of the head to melt towards the earth. 
On your inhale, open up through the chest. Bring the hands a little bit further forward to elongate the stretch. You're now going to float the back foot forward into flat back. And exhale to forward fold. Sink your head low, lift your hips high. On your inhale, sweep the hands wide, engaging into the core, standing all the way up. And exhaling hands to heart. Take a moment here to catch your breath. Connect to your bundles. Let's inhale, hands overhead. Exhale the hands at the heart center. Turn the left hand forward first, right hand back. Inhale to center, right hand forward, left hand back. Inhaling to center, press your hands firmly together, soften the knees, tuck the chin to the chest, and reach those hands forward, rounding into your back. Lift your pubic bone. Inhale the hands behind you opening up the chest opening up the heart arch into the back inhale float the hands all the way up and exhale to forward fold remember you're very welcome to keep the knees soft or even bent in forward fold let's inhale halfway lift flat back and then stepping back through the left leg. Light into the fingers, strong into the thighs. Floating the right hand to the sky, inhale. And then exhale the hand to the mat, stepping back into plank. Squeeze the legs, squeeze the core, open the shoulders. Let's lower knees, chest and chin. Remember to tilt the hip bones up away from the mat. Sliding all the way down, elbows to the floor. And reach your toes back behind you. Push the pubic bone down into the mat and maybe float the elbows off the floor. Remember not to lock the elbows, they are soft and light and there's lots of space in the torso. Exhale to lower yourself down and sliding back into child's pose. One full round of breath here. Making your way into downward facing dog. Engage into your legs, opening the inner thighs outwardly so that the heel hides behind your middle toe. On your inhale breath, let's take the left leg to the sky. And exhale the knee towards the face, lightly stepping the foot next to the left thumb. Back foot comes in just a little bit, toes pointing forward as you lift your chest to the sky. Vira Bhadrasana A. Slide the back hip in and lift open through the torso. Be very mindful again of what's happening in the lower back. You don't want any compression here. Let's inhale the hands behind you. Interlock a different finger on top and roll the shoulder blades together. Open up through the heart on your inhale and then slowly releasing down to the inside of the thigh. Pay attention to anchoring the back leg, especially down the baby toe edge of the foot. From your humble warrior, release the hands down and lift the chest open. Straighten your front knee, step the back foot in a little bit for Pasva Tanasana. 
again reach the body as long as you can and then if there's space you can forward fold allow the energy to shift onto the back leg again and allow the spine to lengthen let's inhale halfway up and then float the back foot forward into our flat back position exhale to forward fold this is a lovely deep forward fold here the focus on what's happening in the legs squeezing into the calves the thighs the knees if you're bending your legs that's absolutely fine flick the tailbone up to the sky let's inhale reach the hands wide coming all the way up to stand and then making your way back into Tadasana. Inhale Utkatasana. Bend the knees and slide the hands up. Lengthen into lower back, creating a neutral spine. On the exhale, breath forward folds. And inhale, halfway lift, flat back. Float your right, uh, sorry, float your left heel up to your glute. And then slide that foot back, making your way into warrior two, placing the foot down as you cartwheel the hands up. Checking that the front heel lines up with the arch of the back foot. The front knee is opening wide and sitting over the front ankle. Lift your torso straight up to the sky. Avoid leaning over the front or back legs, but rather come in between and lift straight and tall. Let's inhale into reclining warrior. And then making your way into Parsvakanasana. Twist the chest open. Make sure you're very light on that front elbow. Inhale, coming back to center and straighten the front leg. Let's reach the front arm forward before releasing the hand to the shin. Roll the chest open, leaning your hips slightly in and your shoulders slightly out. On your inhale, breath coming all the way back up to center, hands to the hips and turning the toes to face the same direction. Squeeze into the inner thighs as you lift up nice and tall and then exhale to forward fold. Hands under the shoulders. Reach the head forward as you inhale and then dropping deeper into your forward fold. On your inhale, breath, lift yourself back up, hands under the shoulders, and then rotating to face the front leg again coming into your lunge. Let's step back into plank, engage into the lower belly, and dropping down knees, chest, and chin. Keep the hands flat on the floor this time as you float open into cobra pose. Elbows soft to the ribs. Lift the chest. Reach your toes back. Lower back to the floor and then coming into child's pose. Let's take a couple of breaths in child's pose. You can relax your elbows, relax your back.
connecting to your breath. Making your way back now into Downward Facing Dog. Looking between the hands, keep the legs as straight as possible as you walk yourself forward into flat back. Exhale to forward fold. And inhale, reach the hands all the way up, standing tall, hands at the heart. On the inhale breath, it's bend knees, sweeping hands into chair pose. Neutral spine into low back as you sit a bit deeper. On the exhale, forward fold to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, and this time floating the right heel up to the glute. Slide the foot back as though you're going through thick treacle landing into warrior two open the front thigh open the back thigh reach the fingers away from one another so the arms are strong you're turning the biceps to face the sky inhale into reclining warrior And then forward into Parsvakanasana. Let's inhale, coming back to center and straightening the front leg, reaching forward before pivoting down into Trikonasana. Inhale, lift yourself back to center, hands to the hips, and turn the feet to face the same direction. You're going to interlock the fingers behind you this time, rolling the shoulder blades tightly together, opening up through the heart, and then exhale to forward fold. Allow the hands to hang over the back body. Maybe soften the knees if that feels appropriate and create a lovely releasing, dripping sensation, softening the fascia around the full body. Let's drop the hands to the floor, inhale, lift the chest halfway up, and then rotate yourself towards your front foot, coming in to lunge. Step yourself back into plank, floating into the body, and let's lower knees, chest, and chin. Sliding the hips to the mat and opening through the front body. Grip into the fingertips, roll the shoulders in and down and gently releasing from here. Make your way back into child's pose. Arms can be forward, under the forehead, or next to the hips. On your inhale breath, roll yourself up to sit on the shins and you're going to swing your legs out in front of you, sitting into Dandasana. For Dandasana, the feet are hip distance parallel, just as they would be in your standing position. Let's float the spine up. When you take the hands overhead, 
keep the shoulders relaxed. Exhale to forward fold. Doesn't matter how far the hands go. You want to focus more on the sensation of getting the belly button to touch the thighs. Reach your rib cage, reach your sternum. So that at no point are we collapsing over the front legs, but rather extending, lengthening into the torso. Knees can be perfectly straight, slightly bent, or even deeply bent, depending on what feels good for your spine. On your inhale breath, lifting up halfway. Bring your fingers to touch onto your big toes. You may need to bend your knees to allow this to happen. So you're touching onto the big toes and now we're going to float your right leg up and pull it back. Lift the heel and then really draw that knee back. This is arrow pose. Feel as though if you were to let go of your foot, it would go flying forward, shooting an arrow out. Let's reach that leg forward, lowering it down, taking the other leg up. So you float it up first and then draw the knee back. Create some nice tension into this alignment, feeling as though you are drawing your arrow back for release. And then extend and gently releasing down. Lift open through the chest and let's fold for a second round. Inhale to come back up to center. Bend your right knee and now if you have no issues with your ankles and your knees we're going to work into drawing the foot behind you with the toes pointing back that's quite important so that the toes are not pointing to the side, placing strain on the ankle. Depending on how this is feeling, you can draw the, le the legs closer together or you can draw the legs further apart. So this is about as wide as you want to go. As soon as you go wider, it's a completely different alignment with the hip. We're trying to keep the hip in a forward frontal position. If you cannot do this, you're going to bring your foot to the inner thigh for Jana Shirsasana instead. Let's gently forward fold. You'll notice that you're not going to go as deep into the fold as you would in your Jana Shirsasana. We're working into ITB and into the vastialis muscles along the front of the thigh. These are generally quite tight muscles, not allowing for a huge amount of space. Either way, try to get your hip to anchor down and allow the torso to reach forward. On your inhale, come back up to center, moving into our deer twist. This front leg is now also going to bend, foot coming to the inner thigh. If you want to, you can bring the foot up into a half lotus depending on how your ankle and knee feels. So now we twist away from the legs, moving to the left. You can have your right hand on your outer knee and possibly bring the left hand to hook onto your big toe. On your inhale breath, return to center. You're going to bring the foot to the inner thigh first, and then the outer leg is going to draw in. So right leg, knee to chest, and then place the foot down so that the feet are facing each other, sitting into Baddha Konasana. Interlocking fingers here around the big toes. Push both knees evenly down to the mat and gently forward fold. Maybe noticing how this has shifted from the beginning of the practice to now. Some days we find we have completely released and opened, can go so much deeper than when we started. Other days, not so much. There's so much that 
is depends our flexibility depends on so many variable factors how much we've had to drink what we've had to eat how much sleep we've had what the weather is like and then gently lifting yourself back to center let's draw the knees in and this time extend the right leg forward and we're going to roll the left foot back toes pointing behind you not to the side adjust your legs accordingly open the knee further for more space or bring the knees closer for more intensity switch the leg around into Jadashya Sasana if that's more appropriate for you let's gently lean yourself forward keep anchoring down through the left hip Creating as much space as you can manage. And then inhale to lift back up to center. Moving into our deer twist, bend your straight leg. Option A, coming to the inside of the thigh. Option B, coming into a half lotus. Let's lift up tall and twist to the right, moving away from the thighs. Find an arm alignment that works for your body. And squeezing into the tummy muscles to rotate. Let's return to the center. Release the half lotus if that's where you are. The outer leg, so your left leg, is now going to rotate inwardly. And we're gonna come into tortoise. So bring the feet a little bit further forward, not quite touching, a little bit of space between the feet. And then sliding the hands under the calf muscles, hands onto the tops of the feet, and lowering your head towards the arches. Allow the legs to soften to the earth. Allow your chest to drip towards your heels. Again, notice the difference from our first turtle all the way through to now. And then slowly releasing from here. Let's draw the knees together. Straighten the legs in front of you. And then gently make your way down. Not all the way to the back, but halfway down. Lift up tall. And now we're going to bend your elbows back. Engage the core muscles. Lowering all the way onto the elbows. Point your toes, wrap your elbows underneath the back body as much as you can, and now lift your chest, lift your heart. This is Matsyasana, fish pose. See if you can get your chest a little bit more open. We're going to float one foot up, keeping the chest open. And lower, other foot up. Lift the heart in response. And lower, bring your chin to your chest and releasing the rest of the way down. Hug your knees into your chest. Little gentle roll from one side to the other. Let's take it into happy baby now. Holding to the outer edges of the feet as the elbows come to the inner edge of the knee. And just like our arrow pose, you want to create a bit of tension here, feeling as though if you were to let go of the feet, your feet would go flying into the sky. 
So we're drawing the knees back. And this tension is creating a sense of support into the hip joints. Flattening into the lower back and lengthening into the spine. Let's draw the knees in together at the chest. And then straighten your left leg to the floor, keeping your right knee into the chest. Let's come into a simple reclining twist. Drop the knee to the left. Big breath in through the nose and sigh through the mouth. Let's inhale back to center and over to the other side. Inhale back to the center, hug your knees into your chest and making your way into Shavasana. Spread the body out so that it feels spacious and supported. Opening the arms at a 45 degree, bringing the chin in line with the chest, just slightly tucking down to lengthen the back of the neck. Smooth the skin around your forehead, around your skull, softening the skin of the eyelids, relaxing your jaw, Relaxing your tongue.
slowly start to deepen and lengthen your breath. Gently running your thumb over the tips of your fingers, moving your toes, ankles and wrists, drawing your feet together and extending your arms overhead, taking a deep stretch as you yawn or sigh, bending your knees and rolling over onto your right side. Keeping your eyes softly closed as you lift into a comfortable seated position. Drawing hands together to heart center in Anjali Mudra. Let's close the class by chanting Om once and Shanti three times. Taking a deep breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Raising your hands to your third eye. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Lowering your hands to your lips, to your heart, to your mat, bowing forward in recognition of your practice. Blinking eyes open, inhaling to lift. Namaste.